basically this is some of the stuff if all of you were here before this is what we went through it's basically what the idea of the messaging is the national traffic system and so forth and uh, we're broken down into three areas and 12 regions and local nets are, are where they begin and end and they take a trip through <clears throat> maybe digital modes or HF CW it could be anything to get them through I I've been listening around here there's there are CW nets uh, I'm a little rusty at CW now I mean it was a time that's all I used for I'm I'm thinking uh, at least 10 15 years that's all I used <clears throat> but I I bought a radio that has a built-in keyer and everything and never hooked a key up to it now I have a Kenwood back here with a straight key. I'm okay with that one, but I'm a little rusty. So I don't want to go on the digital or CW nets and try it. I do it all on phone. And we have the Eastern uh, EAN, CAN, and PAN. So Pacific area, Eastern, and <clears throat> Central. <clears throat> when you see that the, the areas cover the whole North America, because now I'll just skip through some of this. This is our areas. Now the format. <clears throat> um, message format, our radiogram uh, has, uh, it's set up in a couple of different uh, quadrants for, for our purposes here today. Uh, that, that shows a finished one. <clears throat> uh, going through it a little bit, the preamble is a part at the top. It has your message number, uh, precedence number uh, and your let's see what I might as well look what it says here on the preamble has a message number precedence number uh, operating operational handling code HX handling code <clears throat> uh, station of origin a check of the word count and the place of origin and time filed and a date uh, the word count you won't know until you finish the finish making up your message then you fill that in the rest of it you know who you are and where your words are originating and all that sort of thing so that stuff is there your numbers are a, a sequential number that you pick for the ones that you originate <clears throat> and that you keep that going for a year that numbering sequence and then you can reset it on New Year's Day that's some people will do it they carry so many messages they'll reset it monthly so that's what that's about now the next part the uh, addressee name call sign if it's a ham that's the uh, who it's going to uh, this guy says joe smith is his and a radio message was received at and an identification and location and all that that's your that's the form over at the, the side and if you have these <clears throat> in your hand, you can watch along with it. <clears throat> the message, uh, the text, they, this, this limits you to 25 words maximum. You can get an awful lot in 25 words. Uh, so that's, that's why, um, <clears throat> and the, use the word x-ray for a period and you write it as an X and a query is a question mark. You can use the word query for that. That's it. Uh, you don't have to say question mark, you say query, so forth, and uh, salutations. So signature, right in above uh, uh, that uh, of who it was sent by, who it was received by, <clears throat> and include the full number, if not a ham. So <clears throat> the, the number of the person you're sending it to, that has to be on there too. Typically, these are delivered by telephone. Uh, occasionally, someone will actually hand deliver them to the door and they say, radiogram for Mongo, or whatever they do. Now, this shows the uh, numbering sequence, 704. Uh, again, it's an it's, uh, arbitrary number. It's, it's, it's sequential. You can start it at any number, but it's sequential from then on. And the precedence, uh, this is a C, which is a confirmation of delivery is requested. And 
<clears throat> you will you will send that back if you're the final one delivering you fill that out and you send that back as a return it'll follow the same path going back and this is where it originated from <clears throat> the guy's call sign here is n2gs uh he's four check 14 means there are 14 words in it and the place of origin and so forth are filled in at a time and date uh, here's your two with phone number. Uh, their actual street address is usually supplied. <clears throat> and the message itself goes in, in the lines in the form. Question. Yeah. Time filed. Is that the time I received the message or the time the person originated the message? I'm backing up. Where, where was that? At the uh, top file. line. That's the time of the origin of it. That's when it was sent originally. Thank you. Let me see. Does it say it on this? Let me look at the screen. I'm pretty sure it says that. Check. Place of origin. Time filed. Not used much. 24-hour format. But yeah, that's when it was sent. Month and date and so forth. Okay, and uh, when it was received, this you fill that in. Uh, if your station, uh, let's see, they received. Right. Now the next, uh, where were, oh, I was here. One word on every line. And you can see uh, they used the word x-ray. This is the ARRL radiogram form x-ray which is a period detail to follow x-ray which is a period have fun 73 <clears throat> and right here I, I'm, I have one almost ready here no, um, okay and then the signature uh, there is no signature field just write it in the text so and uh, that's the you sign it at the bottom, essentially. And then this one, <clears throat> um, received and sent, the sent is a, a, the call sign you sent or pass a message to is what you write on your form. <clears throat> and, uh, and the call sign from whom you received it, that goes on the received form and the time and date. That keeps you a little straightened out in your stuff. Uh, usually they'll use the ARRL or ARL numbered text. And these are in a book and they're on, you can find them online. They all have, they're shorthand basically. And it started with the, all this started with CW and you didn't want to keep hammering out the same messages over and over when they realized let's give them numbers and the numbers uh this has an example uh they could be happy birthday greetings and so forth uh and if you look them up on online you'll find all of them these are a couple of them 46 greetings on your birthday best wishes for many more to come instead of writing all of that you just say arl 46 it's not the numbers but 46 <clears throat> 47 your message to so-and-so is delivered at whatever time so that could be your return when you get a return back from one of these you'll probably see that too uh 50 greetings so, you. yeah so the arl 46 that would actually take up three word spaces on the radiogram and yeah. not fit into one yeah okay. <clears throat> And that's, that's the idea of it. It saves time. It makes it a whole lot quicker. Until uh, you get through the, the preamble and all that sort of thing, the guy on the other end says, man, I hope this isn't a long one. So then by the time he gets there and he says, ARL 46, you think, oh, good. I saved some time here. That's, that's the whole idea. The idea of, of messaging is you want to get the messages through efficiently and quickly. And for these, uh, the ARRL ones, are, are not often used, you know, for real emergency stuff. It's, it, they can be, and they're made for that, but they're, 
they're a little different <clears throat> from what we'll see on the 213s. Okay, so that, that's the, uh, and your record keeping, um, use a log sheet to keep track of your messages. You can make that up yourself, keep it in a, in a book. Um, <clears throat> the, well, the PSHR, I don't, I don't normally do that. And report to message count uh, received and transferred delivery monthly. That, this is for the, another organization. They they keep track of them. But, so there, uh, you you got to keep track of the messages you send. Hang on to them for a while, and that just make sure that they got through. Once it's done, you can pitch them. Once you get your return back, you can pitch them. It just in case, unless you want to keep them. Some people like to keep souvenirs. They keep books of things, including uh, QSL cards. So it, it, people just look at it that way. <clears throat> now, after, since we've gone through that, I have a message here that um, I'm gonna see if I can send it to you and, and we'll see if I did it properly. All right. Does everybody have a form and they're ready to copy? Yes. All right. Printing now. We'll have one soon. <clears throat> I just got a warning from Verizon. They said that I'm using too much data. <laughs> but they, they're going to throttle me back. Well, I ran out of data at midnight. Well, I was 6% close to running out of data and it reset at midnight. So everything's good today. Um, and on the other one, she's watching a movie. So <laughs> she eats hers up quicker than I do. <clears throat> all right, if we're all set to go, this is message number 24. And you can write along in your, in your book. <clears throat> Precedence R. The HX is C. And the station of origin is WB3BKN. I've heard things about him. And the check is 11. And the place of origin is Halifax, Pennsylvania. Time filed is 1918. The date is April 9, 2020. This one goes to Pima Director, P E M A, Pima Director, Elmerton Avenue. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And the phone number figures 717-555-1212. That's a real number. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Message as follows. 10, I spell Tango Echo November, refrigerated trailers have been delivered to Indian Town gap x-ray and uh, let's see sent and i'm i'm putting in sent uh since i'm the originator i don't, don't put in received from but you can you have to fill that part out and i sent it to w3 abc Okay, now let's go back over that. Did I do it right, first of all? 
I only count 10 words. Oh, no, I messed up. <laughs> yep. Okay, you caught that. Anything else that I did? Okay, did, <clears throat> did I go too fast for you? A little. A little? Okay. No, you're fine. <clears throat> That's kind of the speed I, f I find people doing them in. And if, I, if you do miss something, you always say, you know, stop me and have me repeat and so forth. <clears throat> Actually, um, <laughs> that message has a little bit of truth to it. The, uh, somebody that uh, Dave and I know, Dave Dormer and I know here, works for a trucking company and they just ordered a lot of refrigerated trailers out at the Gap. So I guess they're delivering all them. <clears throat> okay. Hey, that, yeah. When uh, I've heard this, this is uh, Josh. Yeah. When I heard this done on HF, they would use the word break. Is that to pause or is that to drop a line? No, it's a break. That's a pause. Okay. Thank you. Yep. The, um, yeah, they they changed a few things from the old radio uh, to the the. Uh, they used to use the word stop, and we use X-ray for the the period at the end. It's basically, but break is just a pause. Okay. Okay. Now the next one, next form. If you have your general message ICS two thirteen, um, that's the one that. Uh, we use those more often in uh, in county work here. Uh, <clears throat> your your radiogram. What I what I would suggest now, actually, let me let me finish that up here. I have some uh, frequencies here that Bob sent me to look at. I I didn't take a look at that second email you sent me, Bob. Um, did that also have a listing of? It was a resend of one that we had before. The second email, or the email had a, another uh, link to all the nets in the area, including local nets, not necessarily national traffic service oh, okay. nets. <clears throat> okay. Well, the, um, the national traffic nets, <clears throat> if you go on the ARRL, tell, well, I'll let Bob tell you how to find them. How do you find them on the ARRL site? I or, searched for uh, Eastern Pennsylvania or EPA national traffic nets, and then it uh, it came up. It's uh, not quite as easy to find uh, from the web page I found, but you can navigate there. But that's the easiest way to get there. Okay, the ones I have here. Uh, I'll skip over the CW. I'll let you hear it on, on voice. Uh, Eastern Pennsylvania emergency phone and traffic net, 6 p.m. local time daily. If does everybody have short or uh, short wave? I'm old. Uh, HF stuff. Is there anybody who does not have it? I do not, but I'm working on repairing it. <laughs> okay. I do not. Do not. Okay. Um, I, do, I do not. We I do, do not. not. You c if you do not have HF, you can get it on your computer. SDR the radio is on computer. Um, there was a guy on one of the nets that told us where to find that. Um, I believe he, you do a search for SDR receivers. And they are software defined radios that are hooked up to computers, and then you can tune in to anything you want to hear. That, that's websdr.org. Websdr.org. I need to yep. make a note of that so I can 
go to that myself. Terry, Milford, Pennsylvania has a site, and it, if you just Google WebSDR hyphen PA, you'll usually uh, get to his site. Ah, okay. WebSDR PA. <clears throat> you can tune those radios around and find these. Uh, 3917 is the frequency, of course, lower sideband, or if you're modern, 3.197 megahertz, <laughs> and that's at 6 p.m. every day. And it says here the phone net will return summer of 2020. I don't know if they're, if they're on now because everybody's off anyway. So usually uh, 80 meters, 75 meters is a little noisy during the summer. I don't know why it goes away, but it's 3910, that one will be on. And then it moves to 3907 on 8 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So uh, those two frequencies, look for them there. That's 3910, 3907. And the first one I had there was 3917. And the other ones are digital or CW, so I won't get into them. Uh, do you have any others that you look at, Bob? You had no, a, those are the ones that I typically look at, and I had also posted those on the Facebook page. Okay, is that the one with the uh, the picture of the radio tuned to it? That, that's still on Facebook, um, wasn't it? That's still on Facebook. There was actually a different post that had the, the nets on it. Oh, okay. It's a good idea to listen to them, copy them, get practice working them. And uh, the more you, you listen to them, the better you'll get. And then once you get good enough, then uh, start originating messages. <clears throat> and you can do anything. You don't, they don't have to be real messages. You can, you uh, send them to somebody in this group or uh, anybody you know. If you know a ham in another state or something, send one to them. It's just practice. Uh, there's, there's hardly any real traffic going on on those nets. They're mostly practice, so don't be afraid to. <clears throat> I had uh, a couple of them running in my car listening to them. Now, I understand that there's nothing on VHF locally here. There, there was in York, and that's the only one that I knew of, nothing in Dolphin County. So that's something we need to look into starting here. And that for just message handling uh, on the 145 one, one repeater, <clears throat> that's a good place to do it that's, since that's a county repeater. So um, if somebody would like to head that up, and run that net, uh, let me know. And <laughs> Bob has a lot of experience at this, right, Bob? Uh, not a lot, but I've listened to the, uh, the net at 6 p.m. several times, and a lot of times there aren't uh, messages to be passed, and it just becomes a, a, a talk session to t talk about the weather. But it's interesting hearing everybody from around the state yeah, I noticed that too. They, <clears throat> they'll talk for a while and one guy will say, oh, I got a message for you. Okay. But so they, they need to be kept busy. So our messages could then go on to them. So that's, that's something uh, we need to start up and get a little practice in. Now the uh, ICS 213, I'll move on to that. The 213, you'll find them in, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. In um, whenever we go into Pima or Dauphin County, that's where you'll find these. They have them on a computer, <clears throat> and uh, at county we have a we don't have a computer of our own that we can use. Uh, we always carry in the laptop to to do our messaging. We can connect to their internal network. And they'll, they'll let us do that. Sometimes they actually have extra uh, laptops there for us to use. And that's, that's a good thing when they have them. But 
these, uh, we will get these handed to us hastily written. So you're going to have trouble with these when you get them uh, because everybody, they, they use terms that we don't know and they're, they're written very quickly a lot of times and it's our job to figure them out and get them passed on. And in this case, uh, let's see, at the top, the incident name. The, it's been a while since I've been in there working an actual uh, job, but we'll use TMI drill as the, uh, the name at the top. <clears throat> and then the, the name and the position that it's going to, and often that's, uh, it's somebody at a, uh, from the, you know, we're sending messages from the 911 center in Dauphin, or in Dauphin County down at Gibson Boulevard, almost near Steelton, if you don't know where it is. It's right next to a prison, and I don't know what, even know what prison that is. It's a juvenile prison, I believe. So anyway, you'll, you'll be sending it to probably um, maybe a fire company or to someone at a an emergency operations center in another municipality. That's that's our job there is to be the third backup, the tertiary communications for the county. They have their main one that they use. And then there's a secondary one that they have on another separate frequency because if the uh, whatever system they're using gets overloaded, they have a secondary they can go to and the cars and trucks all have the secondary radio in. And probably the only time they get tested is when we're in there doing a drill, but they, they don't get used a whole lot. And then if those in an actual emergency are really busy, then they start throwing messages to us to get around all of that, to get them into the EOCs. So every emergency operations center set up in a county is actually in a municipal building. They can be a, in their local fire station. They can be in their... Um, township building, they, they could be anywhere. Uh, even I found them in the garages where they keep the, the vehicles. <clears throat> and all the counties are seem to be that way. If there is a county radio system, it, it ends up where they can most conveniently put it. And the radios that we have here in Dauphin County, uh, it, they, some kind of a grant was, was available. And uh, if anybody's taking over uh, Perry County, I bet there are grants available that Perry County has not used yet. And they could get radios for in all the municipal buildings. Uh, now the, in here in, in Dauphin County, we have townships and boroughs and each township and each borough has one. And uh, a block apart here in Halifax, you have the township building and, and the borough building. So we're moving that radio to the fire company, which is where it should have been in the first place for the township. But you can, uh, <clears throat> when, when we get to working with Perry County, that's, uh, that's something that needs to be looked at if there are grants available for that. But that's how we got them in Dauphin County. And uh, the radios that we have are ICOM 2720s. They have cross band repeat in them and any one of the uh, operational buildings can be set up as a uh, <clears throat> crossband repeater so that if there's an emergency in like Wiconisco Township, we'll say, and your handhelds won't make it back to any repeaters, you can set up crossband repeat in that radio to reach the, where you're going. So now to get back to this the incident name we already have, who it's going to, it'll be one of those EOCs or a person at the EOC or it could be director at uh, Wiconisco Township. And then from, <clears throat> it would be your name and your position, or may, not your name, but the name and position of the person who handed you the message. That's, that's what goes on there. They'll have this filled out. Subject matter, it could be anything like, we need more refrigerated uh, trucks, or we need more beds, more masks to wear and so forth. <clears throat> so that's what could be the subject. And then, a subject could be mask or trailers or whatever. The date and time, of course, is self-explanatory. And the message, they don't stick to a 
five word per line anything in these. They're very free form. And once you're working with the radiograms and you get one of these, you get a little frustrated at times. And they'll use words probably you don't recognize for whatever they want. So when you're passing them on, you'll have to phonetically pass them on. They're, they're not uh, common usually. They, if they're looking for specific medical items or, or whatever, <clears throat> uh, they're, in the TMI drill, they're checking to see how many people have radiation dosimeters and things like that. Um, iodine tablets, uh, the messages are often for that. It is time now to take your iodine tablets. And if you're in a real emergency, you don't wanna be here in that one because that means the radiation's coming at you. And that's what they pass on in that. And then of course, when they, uh, they hand it to you, they have the message approved by somebody in their signature and so forth. When you get a reply, you take that same form that they handed you and then you put your reply on the bottom and hopefully you'll do it more legibly than what they did. And, uh, and I joke about it, but you'll be surprised when you actually get these. And then uh, <clears throat> you fill out the rest of it, position title of everybody that, that came back to you. And, and then you, you'll have a place uh, to put these messages. The county wants them. And so does the, um, the EOCs. Now, the, the other interesting part about this, at the same time you get this, you're going to be sharing this with somebody who is running. If you're in the EOC at county, you're going to be sharing that message with the guy next to you who is actually typing it into the county system. And that we share a room with that person and uh, there are county radios and uh, backup radios in there with us and their actual console will connect to uh, not only their radios, but to the ham radio repeaters too. It'll connect to 14511, uh, 147.075 and 448.075 right from the uh, console. Their headpiece lets them talk on any of those repeaters as well as their own. So that's, that's the general rundown of the ICS-213. Any comments or questions from anybody on that? Hey, Terry, does yeah. the um, does Pima or the county have the ability to send the ICS two thirteen via digital with FL Digi? They they no, we don't have that in in ours. It's not permanently put in there. That's why a lot of times we'll take our own computers in. And if we have FL Digity on our computers, and uh, this is something that I thought would have been set up by now because that was in the works when I left this position before, and it got lost in the way because um, <clears throat> if, if we go back about 15 years ago, uh, they came to us and said, we have this paper, is there some way we can digitally send this paper through your ham radio to the other ham radio and they can print it out. And at that time we didn't have anything reliable. We looked over all kinds of things, but now with FL Digi and the uh, training that Tom keeps doing on the 145.21 repeater, I think everybody should, should be up to date with that. And during the next emergency or the next drill, we should all take our to our uh, computers with us to the wherever we go and then test that and make sure we know how to do that. But that was a good question. I, uh, they, they did, uh, what was it? Uh, Winlink was one. Internally though, in the county, their own people, they have this set up on their computers. This, this form goes into that computer and then it's, it's transmitted to wherever they do internally. And all these forms are in FL Digi. If, is, is there anybody here who does not do digital yet? You, I have uh, not practiced that yet, no. Okay, that's something that, uh, that's something we need to do probably on a, on a net or 
or something that that may be one of the next things probably that we should cover in messaging is how to do that <clears throat> um so let's see does everybody has a laptop or don't they i don't know don't know how geared up you're everybody sitting is. down <laughs> you have a laptop when you're sitting down i got a laptop i got hf okay does it work best on a laptop that uh, that digi is that what you use i use a laptop because i can carry okay. it with me I, i'm sure there's a program to download for that yeah it's fl digi yeah. is, the, is the program okay. And that program does many different forms of digital. Okay. Will it work with Apple? Do you know? Yeah, I'm sure there is a version of it for Apple. With an iPhone or an iPad. How's that again? It'll work with a Mac, but it will not work with an iPhone or an iPad. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I have a Mac laptop, so that would be fine. Okay. I'm, I understand it's available for Linux too. Because him seemed to like Linux. I have a yeah, IT the is son. Able to run the uh, most recent form of Linux. If you're going to run Ubuntu, it's got to be the latest version or it will not load. Yeah, it's been a whole week trying to get it to work. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> Many years ago, my son, when he was in high school, said to me, Linux is the biggest thing coming. You got to get on it. I still haven't. <laughs> so, and he tells me these, these older laptops that I retire from service will work good on it. So I should get into that. Well, that's, uh, let me, let's see, what did I cover here? Yeah. Well, okay. That's, that's about the digital. We, we need to incorporate that into it because actually uh <clears throat> it's it's so much better i when i was when i got out of this last time that, that was a number of years ago they were i was at a there's the amateur radio working group i was in york at one of the meetings and they were trying to figure out how to get these pictures from one to the other and i said i have a program it's called cam scan on my on my phone Cam scan will take any picture and turn it into a PDF form or a JPEG. And you can transmit that. Uh, there is apparently on the Android phones, there's a way to send uh, FL digis. So they, they did that. And I, and I, I was long enough ago that I don't remember how they were actually sending them, but they did them through their phone. And then they, they tried it and they were, so grateful that I came up with that idea that they started incorporating that in that. And the amateur radio working group is something that if you're serious about MCOM, you might want to consider joining. Their meetings are often online. Well, they're all online now, but uh, they rotate from one place to another. That's it's, I think six counties, maybe five, they get together have meetings and discuss things and uh, keep everybody updated on what's going on. And they're, they're worthwhile. It's the amateur radio working group. And that's, that's another badge that uh, I get to carry. <clears throat> and uh, I'm still waiting now that all this happened, my official badges to get into, uh, into the County. They're not here. So I, when I go down, I have to, go through protocols to get into the building. And if all of this soon ends, it'll be a much easier. Because I haven't yet been able to go in and take an inventory and see what's there <clears throat> since I've taken over this position. Okay, that's what I wanted to cover tonight. Uh, any other comments from anybody or ideas and so forth, what you want to hear next? Be because uh, eventually I'll get back into the uh, AWRL format of, of that class that um, as the mentor for it, and we'll roll with it from one through the end, and we'll, uh, we'll cover that, and you'll be able to then 
get the course from AWRL and take the test and so forth and get registered for that. If you if you didn't already get ECS 10 or 001 from AWRL, you'll be able to do that by the time we're done with the next series of things that I'm going to go through. So, anybody have any, anything else they would comments or anything? I know Question. we're we're running a little shorter this time, but Question Terry? Yeah. So the level one training, I'm on the um, ARIES standard training plan, the booklets that we got from you in the beginning. Level yeah. one has in there um, EC001. Now I've signed up for EC001. It's a bit large and involved as you said. Do you want us to complete EC001 for level one training or do you want us to sign up and be taking it to complete level one training requirements? I, I don't think you need that completed for that. Um, I don't see my book. I, I, had, I had it in the car. Oh, for optional for level one. It's an op optional. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's optional. I, I thought it was. It's a really good one to have. I, um, and I figured it in the, what I do is go through it so that when you do take it, it would be a little easier for you. Did you sign up and start taking it? Yes, I did. So I submitted my level one completion form to you. I sent it yeah. to two email addresses. I don't know if you saw them. I got that. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it's in your, I, I don't know if you could disposition that and let me know, but that was level one. Okay. So, so did you finish AWRL one then? Or are you, you're working on that now? I'm working on the e, EC001 now. So I put that as um, optional and my completion is all I did was sign up for the class. Oh, okay. Yeah, I that's good. I completed some of the other tasks, which I'm taking credit for, but we're not required to finish that till later on. So that's right. Yeah. Level two is when we're required to complete that. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that's, I'm, I'm here for, uh, to, to bounce questions off of too at any time, if you get stuck on anything on that, uh, they don't charge for it now, do they? They did when I took it, it was like 65 bucks. No, they're not charging for it. Yeah, that was over 10 years ago. I I, I don't know when exactly that was. <clears throat> well, it's good because they shouldn't have charged for it before. But I did get a big book to carry with me, and it had a lot of nice pictures in, but I guess maybe I was paying more for the book than anything else. Well, you can yeah. download the class. It's a lot of megabytes, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have the PowerPoint for it here. Do you want us to send when we complete these the certificates to you by email for your yeah. record? Yeah, email is good. Okay. Something that I rec I don't know if anybody cloud servers and Google, if you have a Google email address, you automatically have some cloud storage that you can use. I keep mine on that cloud storage. So when I go somewhere, I can pull up my phone and say, Here's a picture of all of them. They're, they're all on there, all my certifications. And that's, that's, I used to have to carry a envelope or something with them in, but now they're all on the cloud here. I hear some people carry them on a thumb drive and you have to hope that somebody can plug that in. But if you're out in the field and you don't have computers around your, you always have your phone, you can show them to them and they know you're legit. Why not just store it on your phone as a PDF? That way, if the cell phone network's down, you still have them. Well, that's a good idea, but I don't do any, I don't store much of anything on a, on a computer or a phone anymore. That You could do that. The, um, I, I have a habit of breaking stuff, and then I have to, like, this computer I'm using now, I had so much stuff on this, and it wasn't, all backed up, but we were able to save the drive enough to get the data off of it when the boot sector quit on it. So that's why I'm always hesitant to keep stuff on a computer, but you have a good point. Most people aren't like me. They don't break stuff. I have a question for you. Yeah. 
uh, when we complete the 001, um, do you put that in Aries Connect for, for hours or does that, how's that work? You know, I don't know. Uh, you would think you should get some time for that. Okay. That's a good point. And, and Terry, maybe if you put that in for um, something we take for this, then we can sign up for that and, and put some of our hours on, on the EC001. Yeah, I'm going to ask the guy that I ask all these the, questions from. The reason I ask is um, I'm friends with the guy up in Lycoming County, and he logged my FEMA hours for me uh, in Lycoming County. Um, so I, I would assume then the other one would also be able to be logged for ARRL. Yeah, so I did two of my FEMA certificates and I didn't log any of those hours, so that's a good point. Yeah. Well that's <clears throat> yeah, well, let me let me look into that. Now you say, uh Joshua, you said that up there you have them. You can I I reach I, I guess I, I reached their, their weather net up there from my house and uh he got to be good friends with me. He logged my FEMA hours for me, created an event. And at the end of each month, you can sign up on Aries Connect and then report those hours monthly. Uh, but I guess they record them at the end of the month and they got to go out on the 8th of the following month. That's right. They do. So he, he sets a thing up. You can sign up like you would a regular meeting, but you record them all at once at the end of the month. And when you go in to record them, you just type in how many hours you put in? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, then there's the answer to that. Now, the only thing he did different for me, because I'm down in Perry County, was he made an exclusive thing for my county, or, you know, Perry County, and I logged it in on a Perry County training. Okay. <clears throat> because I wasn't from up there. And you actually told them you're from Perry County? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, yes. <laughs> well, there's a couple of you on here from Perry County, I think. <clears throat> I'm not the only one. No. Who else is on here from Perry County? I thought somebody else was. I know there's, there's not many of us. No. <laughs> the um, a guy that uh, DJ used to work for me was in town in Perry County, Second Street back. Mm -hmm. But that was back in the mid '90s. There's a few of them out there. They, they, they're they making that Newport repeater active. The younger younger guys are on it. Oh, good. So I should keep that on because I'm kind of responsible for some of that repeater. I referred your name. Uh, they might get in contact with you because they want to know if they could run a small net on that. Oh, that'd be cool. Information net kind of thing. Yeah. Is that, uh, is Emily one of them? No, it's a young guy. Uh, he's an EMT for Duncannon. Matthew is his first name. I don't know his call sign offhand. Well, that would be good. That repeater needs some activity. That's um, a radio station that I, I'd say I'm employed there. I won't say I work there. No, I, I actually do. I'm their engineer. And I put it in at their tower site up on Newport Mountain. And if I look out this window behind me, I can see that tower from here <clears throat> that it's on. It's it's at a good location. So that, that repeater actually covers well, 444.55. Yep. You look it up uh, and it covers into Harrisburg. I, I, I take that everywhere. I can hear, I can work it out of York too. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so if you get somebody reaching out to you, that was just because I referred them. Yeah. How'd you tell them to reach me? Email or phone or e anything? Email off of a QST or okay. QRZ, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Send them my way. Cause that, that'd be cool to have that. Uh, there's, there's some work in progress to link that one to a repeater on research summit. Oh, uh, several years ago, we played around with it got it working and then uh, something happened. There was, there was a, a malfunction in the repeater down in uh, on Reesters and then it was, it was pulled down. But I, I'm told 
all that equipment is repaired and working now. The guy that had that repeater went to Florida because he was going to start a new life in Florida, him and his wife. They realized they missed the grandchildren a little too much. They came back. So they're up here. And I can understand that one. Yep, yep. Hey, Terry. Yeah. Can I say a word about the CW net? Yeah. Um, for those that want to try CW, there's at 7 p.m., there's some more or less a training net and it's running slow speed, maybe uh, around 10 words a minute, but uh, there's nobody bites anybody's head off. So it's a real friendly small group. And uh, I've been checking in with them every night. We don't handle traffic, but I think it's it's good just to learn to show up on time and learn the cue signals for checking in and stating that you don't have any traffic and just exchanging greetings with the people that do check in. It's usually only anywhere from two to, to five or six that do check in. It, it, it's a commitment of about 10 minutes at 7 p.m. So it, it will welcome anybody who just wants to get on and, and try to get procedural with a, a training net. Oh, what frequency is that on? That's on 3585 at 7 p.m. I may check into that. And it's the PCN. PCN. Or is it PTN? Pennsylvania Traffic Net. I think it's PTN. PTN. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I'll give that a spin. I can. Nowadays, I can be up here at seven in the more uh, in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's a it's a very small commitment of time, and and they don't bite anybody's head off. It's really straightforward and and uh, and even keeled. I, I don't think uh, anybody should be intimidated. Okay. I I have a program in this computer that I practice CW on. I should actually, yeah, I use one of the radios here. I have a straight key. Does everybody still use, nobody uses a straight key anymore, do they? I have one that children play with. <laughs> yeah, where's, oh, I knocked it on the floor here. It's a J38 or the original. And I I can dig out paddles. I know I've got them somewhere. I, I have to see, I have to relearn how to use paddles now. If you go with a single paddle, it's a lot easier. I think I have a Heath kit. I do. I have a Heath kit paddle. If the capacitor is still good in it. So, <laughs> I haven't turned that on in a long time either. All right. I'll, I'll, uh, and the rest of you who don't know CW, it's good to know. It really is. I often get asked if if I'm a no code extra, and I say no. I'm just a slow code extra. <laughs> yeah, that's. I'm slow now. <clears throat> I'm I'm certain of it. Well, I back in my day, we had to have CW to get on the on the air at all. Yeah, and I just went over fifty years of being licensed. Fifty. I'm. What, let's see, I got licensed in 70, 75. It was January, it was either, I took the test in 74, around December, it was January till I got the license, so, of 75. So that's, I don't have a calculator, my mind's not quick enough right now. That's that's 45 years probably. I'm, I'm thinking 45 or something like that. So you got me by a few. So were you, a, you were a WA3 at one time. Yeah, let me see if I can find it here. Can you read that? Yep. <laughs> PPT. Push to talk. I, I was really upset that I didn't get in quick enough to get a WA3 call. The, then I, I was the new guy with the WB3 call. It was the first station I operated from. Wow. Alaska. Military. Yeah, I was in the Coast Guard on an isolated Loran station. I was a technician up there. I got to climb a 1,350-foot tower. <laughs> Better you than me. I, I could have. I, we put up a 760-foot uh, tower on top of Blue Mountain. It's still there. And uh, I only went up about 150 or 200 feet on it. 
that's that was enough. enough. That's more than enough anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't go up anything anymore. <clears throat> at my age, it's over. That's the way I look at it. I'm still putting up towers for the club. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I realized at some point I don't have the upper body strength that I used to. So if I'd get in trouble, I'd, and then of course, uh, <clears throat> my hiking partner, she tells me that I'm out of shape every day. So I'm trying to get back in shape. Of course, I, I always tell her she weighs a whole lot less than I do. She can go faster and she laughs at that. Yeah, well. All right. Anybody else have anything before we call it quits here tonight? Thanks for your time, Terry. I enjoyed it. Oh, uh, good. Thanks for coming. Thanks for putting the Zoom meeting together. It works great. Yeah, I'm I'm pleased with the way it's working now. <laughs> it's now <clears throat> I, after we got off from the uh, club meeting, I got a text message. Is that thing that's in front of you the actual microphone you're using? It is. <laughs> and um, one of the guys wanted to buy one, so I sent him a, a link to where he could buy it. I don't think he's going to buy it. Nobody wants to spend that kind of money on a microphone. But this, this is my recording studio here. So... Every, yeah, I'm actually coming through the recording board into the computer. All right. I'll see you all later. Thanks for coming and um, make sure you go online and check out uh, uh, that you were here so you can get credit for it. And this whole Aries Connect thing I'm learning about, I actually have to sign up that I'm attending a meeting so that um, right, there's somebody else coming in, LBP. There's someone joining us now. LBP, you're on the air. <laughs> Where did it go? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> oh, it's connecting audio. Okay, you're connected. Welcome. <laughs> um, K3LBP, welcome. Thank you. You can hear me? Yeah, but I can hear you fine. I wasn't sure whether I had no microphone here. It must be in the in the keyboard somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah, we were we were just finishing up. Um a little late coming, but uh, we were just finishing up. I tried here. I tried for forty five minutes, I tried everything. Finally I disregarded all the constructions and said what it didn't read, say to do and it did. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we'll be back here in, uh, the, we're here the first, or no, the second and fourth Thursdays of every month. Okay. And um, we tonight we covered uh, message forms from the ARRL. Yeah. And uh, if you, the, uh, where did I put it? Oh, I was writing on it. These uh, radiograms, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what we were working on tonight. And the ICS-213, which... Right. I sent that along in the email and mm -hmm. how to go through them. But um, this, this and session Jerry, is, what's that? And did you record the session? Yeah, that's what I was just going to explain. I, I, okay. recorded, I recorded the whole session, and I will send that out to all of you. And um, we'll uh, <clears throat> make sure that you all get it. It's, it's on... Uh, it's recorded to the cloud of zoom and that's uh the easiest way I, I could do it that way i don't have to send out the file and you can look at it whenever you want and it's possible that uh, it'll send you an email telling you it's there but just to cover it i'll send it as a uh, email to everybody so you have it too you can download it and keep it or just you know look at it and at your leisure whatever well sir i want to apologize for not being in earlier like i said i tried everything what's that one thing that, one thing they finally said was choose another application i just clicked on okay with that application i came right in ah uh, so somebody doesn't know what they're talking about yeah well this this one they they've upgraded the security features on zoom now and i have to let people in and um Sometimes I get a little 
busy and don't look up at that screen and see that there's somebody else there. I don't know if you were waiting a long time or not. No, about, about five minutes, that's all. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry about that. That's no problem. Yeah, the, um, it used to be you could, everybody could just jump in when, and it would just come up with their name and they would come and go. But then apparently people were doing bad things, joining in groups that they weren't supposed to <clears throat> and creating a little bit of disturbance. So it got a lot of publicity and Zoom ran the chance of losing their customers. So they decided they better fix that. So they came up with a better way. Mm -hmm. So that's why it takes a little while to get in now. But the <laughs> next time it'll be a lot easier. So I sure hope so. <laughs> next time I'll know to be misbehaving, I'll get in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they they call it um, Zoom bombing, which means that suddenly some other person shows up on the screen, and they were putting up bad pictures and things, and, and yeah. we didn't want that here. So oh, somebody wanting to ruin something for something good. What's up? There's always somebody trying to run something that's for the good. Yeah, exactly. Mm. There's always always a troublemaker out there. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Jerry, well, I'm shut this down. Yeah. While we're still connected, could you or someone fluent in the hub walk me through how to record the fact that I participated tonight? To record this. You know, we're supposed to log into the hub and say that we were. A, you know. We oh, you mean the Aries the Connect? Yes. Uh, did you log into that and tell, say you were going to be here? Yes. Okay. If, if you did that part, that's the first part. And then you'll get an email after the, after the fact email and then reply to that. Is that. Did I get that right, Bob? You're the expert on this. Yeah, the email is addressed from you, Terry, and it said, thank you for attending. And it has a link in there that we connect, uh, click the link and then put in our time. So, right. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And you have to you have sign up every week. Is that correct? Right. Every week you got to sign up. Gotcha. Uh, Thank you. But both you can sign up in advance and when they're on the calendar or the events are there, you can sign up, you know, as many weeks as you think you're going to attend in advance. And the other thing to note is once the, scheduled time for the event is over, it disappears from, so you got to sign up before the event, otherwise it, it's gone. Right. And the, then at the end of the month or periodically through the month, I go through them and accept all the hours and so forth. And then they're, they're credited in a report that I have to turn in as well as for you. So there's a whole lot of steps involved, but yeah, just follow the link that is sent to you when, when we're all done. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. And thanks for your time, Terry. This is great that you're doing this for all of us. Well, you're welcome. Um, I, I, it would be, I don't know. I have, has my signal broken up, uh, not at all. No, it's good. Yeah, hundred percent to tonight, Terry. Good. I uh, occasionally the the tower that I connect to is ten miles west of me, and if there is a thermal inversion, that signal doesn't always get to me, or if it does, it's delayed. But there's no thermal inversion tonight. It's just a whole lot of wind up on this hill. So tomorrow we'll see how many antennas are still standing out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine will be because it's inside. Oh, <laughs> uh, will be. Yeah, these. I it's have a. Handy. I have some big ones out here. I have a 160 meter dipole, and I have uh, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 dipoles all together out here in one one blob. But uh, <clears throat> there's a vertical. Since I I moved in here. It's, this is all part of the big farm. I live in another part and uh, I came down here to take care of mom about five years ago. I've lost uh, a vertical, three, I'm on the third of third generation verticals for uh, 80 through 10 out here. This one's holding up and I'm surprised. It's been up there three years now. The other one's disappeared in a year. 
Lots of wind up here. And today it was 60 mile an hour winds on, on gusts. <clears throat> so over the last month, we lost the roofs on two buildings and now apparently siding on another one today. Yeah, it's only money. Yeah. Where are you located, Terry? I'm in uh, outskirts of Halifax. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not from this area, but I know enough about that, though. The general area, you're up around Peter's Mountain somewhere. Yeah, you come over Peter's Mountain, and I'm, I'm up against the next mountain up, okay. around uh, close to Berry Mountain. Okay, well, and, I'm, down, I'm down in uh, Messiah Village in Mechanicsburg, so. No, uh, I used to live in Mechanicsburg. Oh, really? Uh, on Trindle Road outside of Mechanicsburg. All right. Well, we're going to shut this down and uh, I'll catch up with you all later. I'll send an email out. You'll be able to look over this thing and, and have it all for you. And you'll actually see, I, I've, I've watched the first time yesterday, we did a club meeting on it. It's kind of like watching a TV show, but the camera changes depending on who's talking. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty neat. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you later. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, Terry. All right. Thanks, Terry.